Hi, my name is John Farmer and I'm a guitar instructor at Mass Music. At Mass Music we offer private instruction for guitar, bass, and drum kit in store. We also offer instruction for vocal and keyboard slash piano and any other instrument you can imagine. We can find you a qualified instructor for it. Today the purpose of this video is to educate you, the total beginner, on how to play your first chord. If you have a guitar in the house and you have no idea how to play it, go ahead and get it out for me real quick. Okay, whether it's acoustic or electric, it does not matter. And if your guitar is not in tune and you have no idea how to tune it, call a store, get a hold of me. And if I'm not in the middle of a lesson, I'll tune it for you, or we'll find a time. <clears throat> We're going to look at first what to do with the left hand. I'm going to turn it over this way. The idea is that you'll have your left hand just dangling like this. Turn it over like this and bring the guitar up to the neck. I had a very good guitar teacher show me this trick. This way your left shoulder is not going to be popped out like this and then you're having to tense it while you're playing. You don't want any tension here if you can help it. Another good trick that another very good guitar teacher showed me was that let's say you're drinking something that you don't like how it tastes and you can't finish it. Well you take that drink you just pour it out and then you play guitar. In the left hand thumb don't use the tippy tip of the thumb like this against the back of the neck. Have it flattened out like this. If your thumb only bends back this far, then that's fine. But you want this portion of the thumb, the joint, and then the flesh part, be contacting about the middle to a little bit above the middle, somewhere near the back of the neck. It won't be perfect the first time you do it, but it'll be better than using the thumb tip to press against the back of the neck to get pressure. So you want to use the very tippy tips of your fingertips to press down frets 2 on the A and D string. So let's say that we're not sure how to get there in the first place at all. If you're holding your guitar and you've got it sitting on your right leg like this, try to get the back of the instrument somewhat flush to your torso. There are other correct ways to hold it, but this might be the simplest thing for us right now. So once you're holding it like this and you've got your left hand where it's touching the back of the neck like so, Take your right hand, or if you're left-handed, left hand, and pick, or finger, doesn't matter, the biggest string that's closest to your face. Put your finger on that. That's your E string. You're going to play the string without your left hand touching it at all. Okay? So on your next string, this is the A string, look over here at your neck, where it starts over here you got this space of wood right here. You're not going to put a finger in there, but go to your next space over this metal bar where you're right over here. Put your finger somewhat in the middle of that fret, and you'll see why in a second. See if you can get a sound out of that. Okay? Now, whenever you're pressing your first note, here's the thing to remember. If it weren't for your thumb, your fingers would push the neck this way. If it weren't for your fingers, the thumb would push the neck this way. They both have to combine to create pressure for the note. Okay? So hopefully you get that note right there. So you're going to hold that note and make sure you have space in your pointer finger. That's why I said B in the middle of the fret. Your middle finger needs to press down the same spot of wood but on the next skinnier string, your D string. Okay? And hopefully you're getting that tone right there. Hopefully you have this so far. Okay? So here's a trick. A lot of people will play the score for the first time. They'll get something that sounds like this. It doesn't sound as real bad, but it doesn't sound real great either, does it? Here's a trick I like to use in the studio all the time. So you can kind of imagine this at home if it helps. You get a pencil and, you know, you don't have any point to it. So you don't, you know... Uh, break yourself with it at all. But if you can get a pencil with in between the neck and your pointer finger knuckle like that, I'll do this to students to kind of trick them into having the correct amount of space between the neck and their hand. Then what happens is the high E string is no longer touching 
that flush in the beginning of the pointer finger. And then your left hand middle finger is not as likely to touch your G string like that. So bring it out a little bit. Give us a nice clearance right there. Okay? So let's say, let's say you did that at home and uh, that was too hard. <laughs> You're like, John, I couldn't play that. Well, here's, here's another chord. Now, the, the previous chord was an E minor chord. Here is a G chord. Everything we talked about with the left hand and how you're gripping the neck or cradling it and then applying pressure, like think of it. Just go to the third fret, one, two, three, on the high E. Press down, and remember, use the tippy tip of your fingertip, not the pad of it like that. Get your third fret high E. And look at your strumming hand from the D string down. So basically, the four skinniest strings. Leave the two biggest strings that are closest to your face out of it. Strum down. Nice pretty G chord. I bet you can play that.